May God bless you all. In our final sharing, the fourth part of this interesting sharing concerning Pope Benedict as a theologian pope, what does he tell to theology? We have to pose today this interesting question. In 1986, intervening in Brescia in a meeting organized by Italian editorial board of Comunio magazine, Ratzinger affirmed that in the widespread awareness of Catholic theology, the authority of the Church often appears as something foreign to science, as something that limits when it doesn't mortify research. Now, especially after what has happened with liberation theology. Is this perception still present? Now the task of the magisterium of the church is not a regressive task, but almost a task of exploration. In a famous essay of 1953, which made, the history, which made history in the theological debate, Karraner, wondering about the Council of Chalcedon, and about the dogmatic definition of Christ as a divine person with two natures, human and divine, which continues to be binding for every Christian, regardless of his confessional membership, asks himself, Calcedon, ein de oder anvang, chalcedon, an end or a beginning? His answer was very clear. Dogma is not an end. It does not stop thought, it doesn't paralyze it, but establishes milestones in regard to which there is no going back, because to want to go back would mean to fall on one hand into forms of Arianism, that is, into an only human and worldly vision of Christ, who would not be the mediator of the covenant and saviour, and on the other hand into form of modalism, that is, a God who appears among men, but who has not truly assumed our mortal flesh, who has not truly committed himself to the human. Now, Kern Rahner rightly said that Chalcedon's dogmatic definition in this connection is a bulk word against re regression, not against progress. Hilary of Poitiers, in turn, intuited a most beautiful dimension of this exercise of magisterial discernment of the Church. He said, dogma is defined by an exigency of charity to help to not lose the end, to not lose the road, to not lose the respectful way that God has indicated to us. Also here, the vision was clearly not defensive or repressive, but prospective. And precisely, the case of liberation theology seems an eloquent example because the fundamental interventions in this regard by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith were two. One eminently critical, which illumined the limits often connected with the ideological dependence of this theology. The other, which instead brought to light its good ideas, the positive contributions, above all in face of a theology, inspired in the primacy of charity and of service. So, this action, with this action, the Magisterium did exactly what Hilary of Poitiers said, and which much more recently Karraner affirmed, that is not only a repressive action to extinguish life, but of protection and promotion of that authentic life, that only the truth of God is able to release in us. It's interesting that one can summarize John's Gospel 8.32, which John Paul II liked to repeat, and which he also repeated in the International Theological Commission when working on the document Memory and Reconciliation, to support the petition of forgiveness for the faults of the Church. The truth will make you free. Therefore, the more the cause of truth is served, the more the magisterium is placed at the service of the witness of truth, the more the letter fosters liberty, the genuine liberty that gives meaning, fullness, life, 
and salvation to men's heart. Father God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood and the Holy Spirit, we thank you for these four sharings. We thank you for the power that you have given on earth to Pope Benedict, not just in jurisdiction, but also intellectually, to lead the church into your truth. Help him, Father God, to really uh, continue to consolidate the church on solid doctrine. Help him also to open the doctrine for depth so that through a um, healthy debate and through a healthy depth in doctrine, we as Christians will be consolidated in Jesus, in his blood, and Jesus will lead us to you, Father, in the Holy Spirit. Lastly, we ask you also that, Father God, that when Pope Benedict comes to Malta, helps him to help him to bring for us a powerful word, a word of salvation, a word that really will make us free because through him you will speak to us the truth who will make us free. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and then the hour of our death. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.